Hey friends, it's Gabrielle. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm baking a strewen loaf. It makes delicious toast, my absolute favorite, and is really easy to experiment with because you use whatever seeds and grains you have around your kitchen. The first step is to create a soaker, which is what I'm doing here. Today I'm using rolled oats, wheat bran, and grits. This loaf is super flexible though. It's meant for whatever you have on hand. I've made it with leftover brown rice, lentils, sunflower seeds, flaxseed meal, and they've all been tasty. Here, I'm using two parts oatmeal to one part wheat bran and grits, but even the amounts are up to you. Essentially, you want three quarters of a cup of grains. Once those are measured out, pour some water over them so they're just covered. I needed about a half a cup. Give the grains a stir to make sure the water gets everywhere, and this step is done. You've earned at least an hour of free time while the grains soften, and you can leave the soaker as long as overnight. The soaker has been resting for a couple hours, and now I'm ready to put the loaf together. Let's get to it! Add wheat flour, bread flour, yeast, salt, and brown sugar to a stand mixer. Stir everything on low to combine. Next, add honey, the soaker, water, and buttermilk. Here, I'm stirring my homemade buttermilk. And I'm just curious, does anyone actually buy buttermilk? I don't. Whenever I need it, I just make some up with regular or almond milk and a splash of lemon juice or vinegar. If I were making a buttermilk cake, then maybe I'd buy some, or I might still make it, but use really nice milk. Anyway, we're making bread. <laughs> so yeah, you mix all these ingredients together on low and scrape down the sides of the bowl as necessary. About now is when I started feeling concerned because the batter was way too wet. I neglected to follow my own notes and added a full three quarters cups of water instead of the half cup that I wrote down. I cranked up the speed hoping that this would help in some way, but as you can see it's looking about the same. However, I have been reading that you shouldn't be afraid of wet doughs and I'm trying to be a fearless baker. So I said, never mind, and poured, I think that's the appropriate verb, don't you? Poured the dough onto my well-floured counter. Then I floured my hands, floured the top of the dough, and started kneading. Ooh. 
look at the struggle, guys. It was real. My inner monologue was a lot of, what is going on? This sucks. Is my bread ruined? Nevertheless, I persisted. More flour, more turning, more spatula scraping, more frustration about how my dough looks like a blob monster. Since conventional kneading was giving me so much trouble, I thought, hey, I should try that bread throwing technique those professionals on TV do. Couldn't hurt, right? Eventually, I felt as though I'd worked it enough. And also, I had super doughy hands and fingers that I was eager to wash. So I put the dough back into the bowl, which I lightly greased, turned it around, and left it to rise. About an hour later, I came back and it wasn't looking too shabby. Phew! Now on to the next step, which is shaping the dough for baking. You'll want to press the dough out into an ovally rectangle, or a rectangly oval, about 6 by 8 inches, and then roll it tightly away from you. Pinch the seams together and tuck the ends under, then place the dough, seam side down, into your greased loaf pan. Eight and a half by five inches is the ideal size for the pan. You know how you get bread with seeds stuck on top sometimes? I don't know how many loaves of strewn I made before I figured out that you have to brush the top with water first, otherwise whatever the topping is will fall off despite your best efforts. Here I'm sprinkling sesame seeds, because I like them the best on strewn. But you can use poppy seeds or even something bigger like oats or sunflower or pumpkin seeds if you'd like. Leave the dough to rise about another hour until it crests the rim of your pan. Bake the loaf in a 350 degree oven for 40 to 45 minutes until golden brown. I didn't bother turning mine halfway through, but you could if you want to. Hooray, it's beautiful! Despite my huge struggle, it's a success!
The outside is well-defined, hard, and crusty, I think due to the wetness of the dough. And as you can see, the inside is really dense. Toast is the way to go with struin, so that's how we're gonna do this taste test. And yes, the first slice is too big, so I cut another to have instead. Look at that pretty golden color. It's actually my breakfast time, so I also made my current favorite, a matcha latte. I filmed an outro, but trust me when I tell you that it was way too close to my face. Rather than causing any awkwardness for us, I'll just say that the toast was so good. The oats, grits, and bran gave it a deep, complex flavor, and it was chewy without being too soft or too hard. Don't be afraid of making this recipe because it's clearly very forgiving. I'll have all the details with the correct amounts on my blog. Feel free to check it out. Thanks for watching!